This video is meant to be a supplement for the Houdini courses offered at Becker College and Lesley University. In this video, I would like to cover layering multiple simulations using different simulation networks, but driving a second simulation from the results of, a first sim of the first simulation. So what I have here is a DOP network, and I just have this torus breaking. And we see that uh, if I can get these two spheres into a simulation, they could be influenced by the fracturing that's occurring in the simulation for the torus. So the first thing that we should consider here is if this simulation, in this case the torus simulation, if this is done, and I'm not going to make any changes to this, then I'm going to want to bake that simulation. And there's a number of ways to do this. Uh, we can use the file cache node and things like that. Uh, but to keep it as, as streamlined as possible, we could simply leverage the output node here in the Autodop network. So if I select that output node, I can cache out the simulation. So right now, here's the path that it's looking for, or that it, w it's, it wants to write to. So this is going to where my HIP file is, and I have on my desktop a project, uh, a Houdini project, so that's where it's located. It's gonna put it into a subfolder called sim, and in class we discussed how we can, we can remove everything here and put in our own custom name if we'd like. Because right now it's looking, for, it's gonna name it the HIP name, the operator name, and then it's going to do the frame and and, sim, and then dot sim is the uh, file format. Uh, but we also do, we do want to keep in mind that this naming convention right here is actually synced up with uh, right here when I after I cache the simulation up at the top level of the dop import node, I can check playback simulation, and that will essentially disable the simulation and play it from disk. And you can barely see it here because it's kind of grayed out, but that name is identical to what the output node is using by default. So if you decide to put a custom name in right here, you'll need to make sure that you also add that custom name up here when you want to play back the simulation. So again, for the sake of efficiency, I'm going to just keep the name as is, and then I want to determine how many frames I need to bake the simulation to. And the torus comes to rest right around, let's say, frame 120. So what I'm going to do here is just click on the start end button and then that's going to give me the little expressions that it's using which is just the start of the timeline and the end of the timeline but if i want to hard code a number in there i can just type it in so if i want to go to 120 i just put 120 right there and then i'm going to hit the save to disk button that's a pretty quick simulation so i didn't even get the progress bar so now that's baked out uh, to the project folder in the sim subfolder so now if i come up here to the Autodop level, I can select the Autodop node and check playback simulation. And now my simulation will be running from disk. And we see it turns purple here in the timeline, so we know that we're actually playing a cache. Uh, if I jump into the Autodop network, it will also tell me right here. Uh, there we go. It says network in playback mode. So there's a lot of indicators here so that uh, you know, we don't get confused with the fact that it's actually not simulating now. Now, if I wanted to go back and adjust this and, and re-sim and recache, uh, I'd have to deselect this playback simulation and then, I, then I'd be back to running the original simulation. So once we have the simulation cached out and we're pulling it back in, we can now start to consider our second simulation that we're going to drive via this first simulation. Um, I'm going to, for organization purposes, just put a network box around these objects because that's my first simulation. So I'm going to type in sim01. So that's my first simulation right there. 
And my second simulation is going to include these two objects, the two spheres. I also need to get the data out of the torus object. So again, just remembering the data flow here, the simulation, these are packed, this is packed geometry. So the simulation is really just points. Then that data is piped back onto the uh, torus and its fracture pieces. And then we have our, our result. So that's why the display flag is over here. And basically that data is being piped into this node inside the Taurus network. So what I wanna do is I wanna get this out of here and into this the second simulation. Again, there's a lot of ways to do this, but uh, just sticking with the way we had done it in class, uh, I'm gonna put down a null node. Whoops, a uh, null. Uh, just at the end of the whole sequence here. And I'll give it a name like um, out fracture geo or something like that. Out fracture geo. Doesn't change the, simula the simulation at all right now. Still have the same thing, the cache simulation. It's just a marker for me to reference to pull uh, this geometry into the new network. So over here, what I'm going to do is create a empty geometry node right here. And I'll call this one the input from the first sim, something like that. Then I'm gonna double click to open it up and I'm going to use an object merge in here. So I'll type in OBJ for object and I'll put down the object merge and then over here where it says object one, I can browse for what object I want to merge into this geometry network. And that's off screen, so let me pull it on here. So I'm gonna go into the Taurus network and right there is my out frac geo null. So that's the one I want to reference, so I'll hit accept. And now we see the, the Taurus geometry is actually inside here now in its fractured state. So I'm going to go back up to the object level. And actually, at this point, I can turn off the original Taurus object here because I've taken everything that the results of what's happened in here, and now I've merged it into this geometry node using the object merge. Uh, again, like I said, there's other ways we can do this, but I like to do it this way so that now I know I can, I can see the organization of all the objects that are contributing to what's going to become the second simulation. So now I'm ready to start building the second simulation. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get these two spheres into uh, the simulation. Now I want this to be a completely new simulation network. I don't want it to go into the original auto dop network. So I need to make sure that when I turn these into rigid body objects, active rigid body objects, they go into a new network. So the way we do that is, uh, the easiest way I think, or more straight, most straightforward way to do that is to create an empty DOP network. So I'm gonna right click in here and type in DOP for DOP, and I'm gonna add this new DOP network. And then down here at the bottom, right underneath my uh, frame numbers, we have this, this drop box and it's being cut off by the video. Uh, but here I can choose between my different DOP networks. So this is cut off, but it says, Auto DOP network or DOPnet one. So I'm gonna choose DOPnet one. That's this new DOP network. So now anything that I create with my simulation tools, dynamics tools, is going to be filtered into this new DOP network. And it's empty. Right now there's nothing in there except for an output. So now I can I can generate my rigid bodies for these two spheres. So I'm gonna take this sphere, make it an RBD object and then choose this sphere and also make that an RBD object. And if I go into this DOP network, we'll see that it's populating in here. Now, the one thing you wanna keep in mind though is when you create an empty DOP network yourself, instead of having the shelf tools create it, it does not put the gravity node in here. So we're gonna to have to add the gravity. So I will uh, right click and type in gravity and just put a gravity node right here. So now if I come back up to the top level and I play this, 
oops, they fall all the way through <laughs> because I didn't add the ground plane in yet. So I'm gonna, I need to add the ground plane to the DOP network. So I could generate a whole new ground plane from the collisions menu or collision shelf right here, uh, but I do already have an existing ground plane. So actually what I'm gonna try to do here is I'm gonna just try to pull the one from here and put it into the stop network. So uh, I'm gonna go into my original auto DOP network because that is where it has these nodes for the ground plane. So I'm gonna select all three of those nodes and copy them. Actually, I'm gonna grab the merge node too, because I don't remember if I have a merge node over in the new DOP network or not. Uh, so I'll just grab all four of those, and then I'll come into the new DOP network, and I'll paste. And let's just cut that line right there for a second. So I wanna place these over here. Whoops, that's not what I wanna do. Uh, oh. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Let's put this here. Ah, I have all of them connect, uh, selected, so it's trying to connect them all together. Okay. Oh, we do have a merge here. There is a merge in here, so we can just remove that one and connect this one in. I don't like my wires to be crisscrossed here, so uh, I'm going to select the merge node and just hit the up arrow so that they uncross. So now we have the ground in here, and let's see how that works. There we go. So now they fall onto the ground. So we're basically, in this case, we are pulling something from the original network. Instead of keeping everything nice and clean here, we're pulling the ground plane. So again, I did that by just finding the nodes in the first stop network that relate to referencing the ground plane, and then I, I put those into this stop network. Now this stop network has its display flag on. I don't need that. I can turn that off because if you remember what's happening is this stop network is sending the information back to both spheres geometry networks right there and a dop import right there and a dop import right here so we don't need a display flag on that so i think we're ready to now try to get this the results of the first simulation on the fractured Taurus into this simulation. And we're gonna do that by using this node. So at this point, we can think of, you know, having pulled the simulation into here, into this geometry network. This is essentially a deforming geometry object. So that's how we need to add it into this network. So with this object selected, with this geometry node selected, I'm going to come up here to the collisions menu and choose deforming object. And now that should be added into the DOP network. And let's lay that out with the L key. And we see it's bringing it in right here. There's the static object. And the most important thing here is that it is using deforming geometry. And now we should get some simulation interaction. Let's see what we get. There we go. And now the fracture from the first simulation is now influencing those objects here in the second simulation. So we've essentially or effectively just built uh, two simulations. The first simulation is now affecting the second simulation here. So if I want to put a network box around that one, I can, and I can call that Sim2. Sim02. And now we have our two simulations. So just one, one way to be able to build or layer simulations instead of trying to build it all in one giant simulation network. You know, that's one of the challenges of, of art directing a simulation is to figure out how you can build it in modules like this so that we have more control over it and we're also being more efficient uh, and not having Houdini grind away at one simulation. So if we needed a third and a fourth, we could do the same, take you take the same procedure here. We could cache out the simulation and then bring that into another network and another simulation and just keep building from there. So hopefully that'll be a good reference from what we covered in class the other day.